the CCCM Global Retreat Practitioners Day. My name is Louise, IOM's GBV specialist based in Geneva. I'm also joined by two GBV colleagues who will be co-facilitating this session also, Victoria and Alicia. I'll hand over the opportunity for them to introduce themselves and their roles as they facilitate the different components um, of their sessions. So this session will focus on GBV mitigation. I just wanted to say thank you for the organization team of the CCCM retreat for allocating some space for GBV. And we're very much looking forward to the fruitful discussion and hearing from about good practices and challenges from, from all of your various contexts. I just wanted to say something about the objective of this session. We wanted to serve um, as a refresher of what we are talking about when we mention GBV mitigation and specifically in CCCM work. We also hope as this is the first session of the day and we have all of the early birds online, that it can stay in the back of our minds throughout the rest of the day's presentations and remind us um, to continue to consider the safety of women and girls throughout our work. So we wanted to make it as interactive as possible and really encourage everyone to provide examples um, and some of the challenges you faced in the context you work. There will also be some time at the end for, for Q&A. So now I will hand over to Victoria to to lead us and kick things off with, with a survey. Over to you, Victoria. Thank you, Louise, and good morning, everyone. It's very nice to, to, to have so many early birds on, as Louise mentioned as well. Um, yeah, my name is Victoria, and I'm also part of IUM's um, GBV TCM team sitting in, in Geneva. We wanted to start also with a, with a Mentimeter today, which I know that you've been using throughout the, this week and will continue to use. So if we can ask everyone to, to go on, on menti.com um, and then type in the, the code that is, is uh, written also uh, on, this, on the screen. So Alicia will just help us to, to share as well the, the screen so we get up the, the Mentimeter, I think. I put the link into the, the chat uh, as well. And we'll also copy it in the, the code. So let us know if you have any difficulties with, with getting onto the, the Mentimeter. Thanks, it seems to be going okay. Alicia, do you want to put on please the Menti slides too? Wonderful. So just to get ourselves a little bit, you know, going today, we, we just want to hear how you're feeling. It's a Friday, so, you know, maybe a little bit tired or if you're still very energized and, and excited about this uh, full day with very interesting participation from, from colleagues uh, around the world. So we want to just hear. Um, good, very well. It's off for us, you're energized, hungry. <laughs> I suggest grabbing some, some food now when you listen in to, to the session too. Someone's ready for the weekend as well. And we're a little bit sleepy. That's also, uh, I think that's allowed and, and common on a Friday morning. Someone's ready to have a coffee. Nice, we got a little bit of different feelings today, which I think is also, also good. Um, and someone's already on their Friday night. <laughs> well, we're having our coffee in Geneva, at least it's 8.20 here. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks so much. Uh, I think we can maybe move to the next question. So we kind of want to just like take a little stab and, and hear from you as well, what you, for you, what mitigating risks of, of GBV means as a, as a first question. And we have options here. First one being, is it about changing norms and practices that are harmful towards women and girls? 
does it relate to taking action to address factors that contribute to increased risk of exposure to, to GBV? Or is it about setting up GBV specialized services? Um, or maybe you do not know, which and hopefully we can, can also work with you today to, to learn more about that. But it seems to be a very one-way straightforward answer for a lot of you, which is very, very interesting and good to see. So it looks like, at least for this one, we're all on the same page this morning. <laughs> That's very um, wonderful. Thank you. Because um, it is exactly about taking action to address those factors um, that do contribute to, to increased risks of, of exposure. Next question. So what are some of the groups then at risks of, of experiencing gender-based violence? Is it not coming up any answers there? Yeah, oh, you can write in. Sorry, I forgot the, the answering option tier one. So you can type in anything that you that you think and what you see. We have women and girls coming up a lot, even with an exclamation mark. Everyone. And we have widows, female headed households, children, persons with disabilities. Women and girls and, and house headed household, children, girls, and sometimes males too, women and girls. Nice, thank you so much. So um, indeed, everyone can um, experience uh, gender-based violence, but we do know that women and girls are disproportionately affected by this violence because of the, the uh, gender inequalities and different uh, power dynamics that we, that we have in society. And we'll look a little bit on that later as well in the session. Next question, Alicia, please. So why is it important for CCCM actors to know how to mitigate risks of, of GBV throughout their activities? And then we have some different um, options here where you can select whichever you feel uh, works. You should be able to select more than, than one to be aware of vulnerabilities of women and girls and other at-risk groups. Is it important to avoid doing harm, to be able to respond to donor priorities, to be a better coordinate with different actors on multi-sectoral response to GBV, to be able to identify GBV incidents, or you don't know. I see the answer coming in. We're changing a little bit here and there. Vic, is there a way for people who just joined to join in as well? Or are you about to wrap up the mentee? No, we have a couple more. So people, yeah, feel, feel that people can still join in. I think so. So, because I think we have two more after this one, right? Yeah. Um, so we have some, some leading answers here, which I think you're, you've been answering very, very well about being aware of vulnerabilities and to avoid doing harm, which is really, really, you know, one of the key aspects of why we were doing risk mitigation. And also, yeah, to better coordinate on a multi-sectoral response. Next question. So we have a few examples here and which one of these are possible risk mitigation measures at a, at a site level? Could it be around sex segregated latrines with different directions for access, installing lights in around facilities, having women centers and child friendly spaces set closer to where women go inside um, the different shelter sectors, straight and wide pathways that provide clear visibility ahead, or you don't know. I think we're getting some quite leading answers uh, here as well. Um, 
about about sex segregated latrines and and lights and and putting um, women's centers, for instance, closer to you know in their near proximity. Um, this is excellent, and I think we would also like to hear more from you later in in the session as well about examples um, and good practices that that you have. Okay, next question, please. So yeah, what are some of the actions that you have undertaken? Maybe throw out some, a few examples very briefly, and then we can also discuss a little bit later in, in the session on this one. This is our last question. Awareness raising, great. Having women in the teams, training staff. These are very good examples. And also then having women in the team, I think it's very important also to, to, to highlight. So that's a good one to see. And a way to set up sanitation units for each family. Again, training staff and partners, nice. Yeah having confidential uh, reporting mechanisms, gathering ideas from, from women committees, so more around the participation, excellent. Um, safety risks audits, um, women's representation, having you know, street lights, et cetera. Reinforcing of, of shelter structures and installing to know locks and latrines and showers, working on community empowerment. Very nice. These are some really good and, and excellent um, examples of, of actions. We're very happy to, to see this coming in. I think we should end um, with the mentee now, and then I'll hand it over to, to Louise to go through the, the next um, part of the session. And thank you everyone for your participation. Great, thanks Vic, and thanks everyone for the participation in Menti, and great to see um, already some good examples. So we wanted to go through um, some of a refresher in our mind, which I don't think we want to spend too much time on because I see that you already have a good understanding of GBV mitigation, and we aren't going to go into what is GBV and all of the different types, but I just wanted to remind you that when we talk about GBV, I know that you have a good understanding, but we need to remember that it's not just rape or sexual violence, but we're also talking um, about denial of resources and opportunities because of your gender. So we get the question, but but why, why does GBV occur? And why is there this focus on GBV in CCCM work? So we need to remember that GBV is rooted in gender and power inequalities. Um, and these exist outside of conflict and disaster settings. So we see from the media, from COVID, um, that it's happening, it's increasing in households all across Europe. So we know that this exists all across the globe. But why we focus on it so much in camp and camp-like settings is also because we know that GBV increases in all crisis contexts. This could be because of displacement, because, um, because social protection systems have, have broken down, um, um, and other, other examples from, from crisis contexts. So I'll move to the next slide. So what do we mean by GBV mitigation? Basically and essentially, we are talking about good programming. So linking it to the concept of, of do no harm. We also want to avoid any of our programming within CCCM to have an unintended yet still negative impact that might increase the likelihood of experienced GBV. So possibly, for example, uh, we are looking at, okay, if we put all of the shelters very close together 
and very cramped spaces um, and very small shelter design also, for example, we might increase um, the, the situation of domestic violence because of the increased tension. Um, okay, so um, something that is also forgotten when we talk about GBV mitigation is that we want all staff and all um, sectors to be trained on how to safely and ethically respond to a disclosure of GBV. So everyone, not just GBV staff, need to know what to do if someone approaches them and um, says, okay, I have experienced an incident um, and how to do that in a safe manner. Everyone needs to know. Um, when we talk about GBV mitigation, we also want to foster participation and empowerment. Um, so this is just a refresher um, for you all, but I see from the mentee that you have a good knowledge anyway, and I'll hand it over to give some more concrete examples to Vic. Thanks so much, Louise. Um, so we wanted as well to, to then look at what does this mean in practice to, to avoid uh, unintended negative consequences and, and, and ensure good programming um, and also foster empowerment and knowing how to, to refer. Um, so we wanted to have a few examples with you and discuss a little bit later on, but wanted to draw your attention as well to this interagency DBV guidelines um, resource, which I think that many of you are um, maybe familiar with already, but just to, to, to draw your attention to it as well, uh, as it provides a lot of guidance for integrating different considerations throughout the whole um, program cycle on what to think about and what we can, can do in terms of, of addressing uh, risks of, of GBV in CCCM programming specifically. So we put up just a few examples that links through you know, in your programming related to participation. And you already mentioned that to have women as, as, as staff in CCCM operations, and also then, you know, working with women committees and promote and ensure their active participation in, in CCCM activities. Also in terms of, of access, as Louise mentioned, you know, it's really about that, that differences in, in, in barriers maybe to accessing uh, services and opportunities to really then analyze the physical safety around uh, insights around accessing these different uh, services and assistance that the CCCM um, provide and, and help coordinate. And then a few examples around coordination, again, to really work with, with the other sectors to address risks um, and having DBV on top of the agenda in your conversations um, with other sectors uh, and within CCCM as well. And then of course, share information. Um, on, on anything that would, would relate to, to GBV and risks. We have a little bit of an, of an exercise that we wanted to do together with you. So I'll hand over to, to Alicia to explain that um, now. Thanks. Sorry, it took me a while to unmute myself. Uh, thank you, Vic. Uh, so we're gonna do a quick exercise. Uh, the exercise is I'm gonna show you a photo. And basically what you need to do is look at the photo and identify any GBV risks that you can spot. And also what also you need to do is also suggest what measures you can take to address those risks. So this is the photo. As you can see, there's a long line of women here and children. There's a barricade nearby. You see a lot of young boys. So what are the risks that you can see here potentially? Uh, please write your answers in the chat. Yes, we have someone pointing out here that there's there's no shade. So, you know, you have the, the sun exposure as well while waiting. Anything that can come to your mind when you when you see this as well. No separate space for, for children, potential harassment to, to people queuing there. 
long waiting time, yes. There's a very long line. Um, we can't really see where it, where it even starts or ends. <laughs> Please also keep in mind that you're also trying to spot the risk of, of increased likelihood of GBV or how to mitigate GBV. Um, so I might give a little hint, but also looking at the individuals in the queue, who, who is missing here? Good possible exploitation from skipping the crowd. Yes, we have. Where, where, where are the adolescent girls? And there is no men. So, so where are these individuals? Um, and if all of the mothers need to come to a distribution queue at the same time and have to leave behind maybe adolescent girls or other girls in the home, um, is this putting them at risk in any way? Yeah, a lack of elderly people as well. Good. And we also have a colleague who pointed out with, you know, the, for, for persons with disabilities, right? There's no separate lines and we, we can only, yes, yeah, see maybe empty wheelchairs behind there. So we can also ask, you know, how are they accessing these and, and where are they um, at this point? So how might we mitigate some of these risks that we've spotted? Okay, separate separate lines. Um, it depends on the on the context. I think it could be it could be a mitigation um, if you're doing a very large distribution that you separate the lines. Um, waiting areas, pre-distribution token. Yes. So we have a really good one here. Organize the distributions for smaller groups or have them staggered over different times of the day. So you don't have a very big queue like this that most of the, the blocks can stay at home until their time to come to the distribution. So making sure that everything is organized, that persons with disabilities also, we see you know, some of the girls or women might, might have been in wheelchairs that we make sure that there's special allocations for them. Having a child-friendly space, maybe during during uh, distributions to have activities for girls. Excellent, really, really good um, examples. I think for for time, um, maybe we we will jump to to the next um, slide. Um, but I think I think it's just a good reminder of how we can take small actions to mitigate risk in in our activities. Uh, so I'm going to play a video. Uh, so just give me a second because I do need to change my screen. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Alberto Picciolio. I work with IOM Shelter Team here in Northeast Nigeria. Um, I'm in one of the camps in Maiduguri um, and I wanted to talk today about uh, gender-based violence related risks and site improvements and what we can do to improve site conditions. So one of the examples that I wanted to make that happens uh, across sites and not only here um, is when you have many um, spontaneous constructions like makeshift shelters like we have behind um, me here um, and this creates some challenges to um, populations that are living here in terms of accessing it uh, safely and with dignity. Many shelters are very close to each other. Uh, also in the background you will see this creates some issues for going in and out safely. It can also create issues for um, evacuation in the case of an evacuation, either for other hazards, but also if someone is escaping a case of gender-based violence, for instance. So 
There are things that we can do to improve these conditions. Some of the things that we're looking at is, for example, reorganizing the location um, of shelters, uh, also providing some shelter support materials so that the conditions of the shelter themselves can be improved, uh, but mainly creating better spacings, better, better access to uh, move around and in and out the shelter blocks. And this is just one of the examples of the things that we can do. Thanks for listening. Great. So we only have five minutes left. So a really nice um, example from Nigeria, from Alberta, but we'll just keep going. The next is, is a discussion. Um, we have five minutes, so hopefully we can... Hello, everyone. Um... Alberta is, is coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so this is our discussion to try and uh, learn from one another and um, from your different contexts. Can you give an example from your context on how you have improved the safety of um, women and girls as a CCCM actor? Okay, and maybe someone who wants to talk about um, the examples, maybe they also have a challenge um, that they have faced when trying to mitigate GBV. Um, so any brave uh, participant who wants to provide an example for learning purposes for our other participants. Please feel free also to unmute yourself or I'm not sure how it's working, but you can, you can, um, you don't need to write it if it's easier to speak. I can't see. Okay. In Afghanistan, we separated entry doors for male and female in a community center. Okay. So, so this was maybe also for if there was a community center and there was activities going on or distributions that they were, as was mentioned before, maybe separating the lines um, to avoid any harassments in the queue. So a really good example there from Afghanistan. Thank you so much. Anyone with a challenge on how they maybe try to mitigate GBV um, or, um, yeah, maybe I can, I can also give one, is that sometimes we do a lot of observation of risk, reporting of risk, um, and one of the key challenges that I see is we're not allocating funding to to address them or to mitigate them. So we know that this is maybe causing harm, that we have a water point that is very far from the shelters and women need to walk a long distance, um, but we don't have any uh, funding from our projects to be able to, to address them um, in, in a concrete way. And um, so this is, is some of the challenges a lot of the time that we, we are, we are faced with and that are reported to GBV um, um, also. Um, someone is men mentioning safety audit as a mitigation measure. Excellent. Um, so yeah, doing something jointly um, with, with GBV protection and CCCM to, to try and find out what are the barriers and the risks for, for women and girls. Excellent. No one wants to speak, it's very early. <laughs> Okay, um, I think we can skip. We basically face challenges in the community level as the decision-making power of women is less. This is a really good example of a challenge of mitigating GBV and is kind of linked also to the last question on how ensuring the participation um, of women and girls. And I know you've also had many discussions um, on this through, throughout the week. So we are running out of time and I know we're being very strict on, on uh, the timing for today. So we're really grateful for um, having the time to speak to you today and for your active participation. We've put our uh, contact, if, if anyone wants to contact us from IOM, we're also a core member of the GBV AOR. So feel free to get in touch with questions also. Thank you. Thank everyone. you so much. Thank you, Louise and Vic and Alicia. Um, that was really great way to start the day.